In a previous video, we looked at a rigged character and how to use its controls to pose it. While we won't be animating in this video, we will be using some animation techniques to create stronger poses. In particular, I'll show you how you can set keys to really push your poses. One thing I really recommend when you're creating a pose for your character, or for that matter, when you're animating your character, is to create a unique camera uh, which you will be rendering from. So in this case, I currently have, if we look at my outliner, uh, I have the character here, and I have a perspective top, front, and side camera, or cameras. I like to keep these cameras as working cameras and then create a fifth camera which I will use as my rendering camera, which I will do now. I'll go to Create Cameras, Camera. I'm going to rename my camera to Render Camera. Uh, press spacebar to look at my four views here. And I'll choose one of my orthographic views perhaps the top one. I'll go to Panel, Perspective. Here's my render camera that I just created. And I'll position this camera, uh, let's say, from where I will want to render from. In addition, I may choose to actually turn on the resolution gate so that I can see the borders of my render. Currently, it's set to 960 by uh, 540. Uh, as you know, that is something that you can set here in your render settings. The reason why, again, I like to have a render camera, uh, another perspective camera that I use specifically for rendering, is so that um, I can use this camera, my regular perspective camera, uh, as a working camera, so I can pose without losing the placement of this camera. Now, I can accidentally lose the placement if I move this camera, so what I will typically do is one of two things. I can either bookmark this camera position, or I can set a key on it. Oftentimes, I just set a key on it, selecting the camera and pressing S. And as you can see here, we actually have keyframes on this camera. That way, if I were to move this camera, let's say I accidentally moved it because I thought it was my working camera, if I just scrub in my animation, it will pop back to um, where I keyed it. And in fact, if I wish to choose uh, to explore different camera positions, I can do so uh, simply by scrubbing in my timeline and moving the camera around to different positions and keying those as well. And then that way I can scrub it between or among all my different camera positions as I explore and find the best position. There's another way, however, to uh, make sure that you don't lose all the work that you put into placing your camera, and I will show you that as well. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete my animation by selecting these channels in the channel box, right-clicking and saying Cut Select, Cut Selected. That gets rid of the animation that I put on that camera. Uh, because I want to show you the other way that you can make sure that you don't lose all the hard work that you put into placing your camera. And that is by going here to this little ribbon icon, which indicates a bookmark. And what you'll see is that I can click on it. That'll create a bookmark on that camera. That way, if I move this, you can see it doesn't have animation. I can't scrub to it. However, I can go to View, Bookmarks, and here it is, Camera View 1, and I can simply select it. It'll pop right back to where I originally positioned it. In fact, if I want, I can bookmark other camera views as well. I'll book this, uh, bookmark this one as well. 
Uh, maybe I'll do one other uh, that will be further back here, let's say, and I'll bookmark that as well. Now, I'll go back to view, bookmarks, and I have my camera one position, my camera two position, and my camera three position. I'm going to return to my camera view one position. So I'm going to pose the character as if he were pushing a large boulder, let's say. And as a stand-in for that boulder, I will use this sphere, which I will scale up and position. Perhaps I'll adjust my camera a little, maybe something like that. And because I moved the camera again, I should create another bookmark for it. Now I'll start posing the character. So here's my pose of the character pushing uh, this big boulder. Now, I think this pose is very, very weak. I didn't put a lot of work into it. It's not very dynamic. I don't really get the sense that the character is actually even pushing, uh, pushing this great weight around. So the primary purpose of this video is to show you ways to push your poses uh, and a way where we can actually use setting keys as well as uh, you know perhaps taking a look again at the dope sheet which we looked at earlier so what i'm going to do is i'm going to key all these controls on my character and i'll do that simply by selecting them all i'm going to marquee select these controls i actually don't need to select the boulder so i'll deselect that and I will press S on my keyboard. Now my character has been keyed. And in fact, if I were to come in here and start adjusting the character, You'll notice that if I scrub in my timeline, boom, he pops right back to the pose that I keyed. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that I selected all the controls and I keyed them all. In fact, if we look at the dope sheet, which you'll remember, you can find under Windows, Animation Editors, Dope Sheet, you'll notice that the character has Let me make sure I actually have all the controls selected. The character has a number of different animation controls, and they've all been keyed. Now that I want to push this pose, make it into a more effective, appealing, and interesting pose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub in my timeline to frame 10, for example, and once again, I'll start um, creating a new pose or maybe pushing this pose further to make it more effective. A couple recommendations I would make to you when posing a character is do some research. Ask a friend or colleague or classmate to uh, get up and actually do what you want your character to do. Uh, you can also find good uh, image reference on the internet. Uh, I could look up push or pushing a wall or some other uh, phrase that might help find images that, that I find might inform 
my decisions when I uh, pose my character. Or, for that matter, get up and do it yourself and see what position you get in when you try to push against something like a wall or something like that. I will start posing the character next. So I've worked on the pose, a, you know, just for a few um, a minute or two, and it's already looking a lot better. Uh, the important thing is that uh, I mustn't scrub in the animation here because it'll pop back to that original pose. What I first must do is select all the controls minus the boulder and key them by pressing S on my keyboard. And now I have all these controls, they're keyed on frame 10, and what you'll notice is that I can scrub in between the two poses and compare them. And you can see that this one looks very static, not very convincing, and then this pose is already looking better. In fact, you can see that we can interpolate between the two as well. Uh, but already this is looking a lot better uh, but I'd like to push it even further. So I'm going to now go to frame 20 and I'll continue working on my pose. Okay, so I spent a little more time posing my character. Uh, the other thing I should point out actually is in my render camera, I turned off the NURBS curve controls so that I wouldn't see them. Oops, let's see. There we go. Uh, and each iteration that I did of the pose, I keyed all the controls, which allows me to very quickly and easily scrub through and iterate on my pose. So if you remember, I started with this very weak pose here, uh, but I continued to iterate on it. And I finally settled on this. This is the pose that I settled on for my uh, final pose for this, uh, this, this pose. Three. So those are a few tips and techniques for really pushing your pose. Uh, and in summary, the uh, tips were to create a unique camera. Uh, in this case, I created a fifth camera called Render Camera, and that is the camera that I'm working to. Uh, that allows me to use my perspective camera instead as a working camera. Uh, and to also uh, use your timeline and set animation keys on your controls uh, to really kind of push your poses and explore and experiment with them. I hope that this video has been useful for you and thank you for watching.